Okay, so the next talk is going to be by Andre Gottrich from Academia Seneca, and the title of the talk is Vowel Alternations in Matu U1 Atayal. Take it away. Thank you. Um, all right, we have a lot of ground to cover, so I'll just start. Um, I'll talk about uh, synchronic vowel alternations in uh, Matu U1 Atayal. Uh, I'll talk a bit about what the language is and where it is, then introduce the synchronic vowel alternations. And more precisely, uh, we'll talk about the interactions between the different alternation processes and uh, then provide a rule-based analysis uh, and a constraint-based based analysis and conclude that neither one nor the other is actually perfect for, for the data that I have at hand. So let's start. Uh, Atayal is an Austronesian language, of course, spoken in northern and central Taiwan. You see here on the map and uh, this map uh, has uh, seven dialects from uh, my dissertation. So uh, Matuwal is number three over here in uh, Miaoli County. So together with Sedaq, it's uh, part of the uh, Atayalic branch closely related to, to it. And other than that, seems to be a primary branch of uh, Austronesian. Uh, Matuwal uh, belongs to the Northern Atayal branch according to my own analysis. Uh, so this is the consonant inventory, um, mostly just uh, the same as uh, IPA for, for the consonants, except the, uh, the voiced, uh, the B and G aren't uh, plosives, but the fricative C is an affricate. Um, other than that, okay, so the vowel inventory uh, is pretty simple. We have I, E, U full vowels. We have schwa appearing on the surface, right, but there's some... Um, um, there's some uncertainty on whether it constitutes a phoneme or not. So some people think that uh, it, it's not phonemic, it's quasi-phonemic because uh, its distribution is heavily restricted. For example, it can never appear in stress position. Moreover, in Matuwal specifically, uh, it can pretty much only appear in uh, an initial syllable. And uh, we'll, see more, uh, we'll see more about that uh, in, in the data. So Matuwal is uh, unique among Atayal dialects in that it allows uh, hiatuses. Uh, but hiatuses also have a restricted distribution. They can only appear between the final two vowels. We'll see some data with hiatuses and uh, also the alternations uh, that, that occur in hiatuses specifically. Stress is always word final in Matawai. All right, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's start with the uh, different uh, vowel alternations. So we'll talk about mainly three types of vowel alternations here. We have the uh, alternations of historical schwa uh, in uh, mostly in the final syllable, but also in the, pen in the penult. Uh, there's also rhythmic vowel reduction and hiatus resolution. Uh, so the historical schwa alternations, these are alternations of a, a vowel that, that historically uh, has been a schwa sometime in the past. Uh, in some cases, uh, as, as close as proto Atayal, but for the final syllable, uh, a bit earlier than that. So the, the time, uh, time frame of, of uh, sound changes of schwa in the uh, final syllable versus the penult is actually different. So uh, as you can see here, in the first set of three words, we have a final U vowel, uh, which is deleted uh, in suffix forms. Um, and the second set shows uh, kind of the opposite. So we have a like a two, two, CV, C, two CVC uh, syllables here in the infixed uh, form. But when it's suffixed, uh, a vowel surfaces and the vowel is unpredictable. Uh, well, no, actually, the vowel, the vowel is predictable. The vowel is different, but it depends completely on the, on the following uh, vowel, so it just copies the the following vowel here. So for uh, harakun, uh, the the uh, the a here, the initial vowel, it just completely copies the uh, following a and so so on. Like the same for the other words. Uh, you also have roots where both uh, vowels alternate. So both the final and the penultimate syllable have alternating vowels, and in this case, uh, the like the this, this vowel here, the vowel following the first consonant, it will always be an a. Ah. So if, if it's followed by a, an alternating 
vowel itself, it'll just default to a, an a vowel. Um, now, this contrasts with uh, non-alternating st uh, stems. So, so there are words with, which have an u in, in like the final syllable of the root, whether or not they're suffixed. So this, this isn't across the border. This is specific to uh, these, uh, this set of words. And, and these historically all come from a schwa vowel. Um, there's another uh, process in, in Matuwal specifically uh, that is uh, rhythmic vowel reduction. It has been talked about by uh, Huang in the past. And this is basically what you see on the surface is that the fourth to last vowel, um, if, if it's in the root, if it, uh, uh, if it falls on the root, then it gets uh, reduced uh, to a schwa. So uh, on the left, we have um, a three syllable uh, root. And so the, so the fourth to last vowel is on the infix or else on the prefix and the no reduction takes place. But as soon as we suffix it and we have uh, the so fourth to last vowel on the root itself, then it becomes reduced to a schwa. And this is, uh, we also have like a, a, um, uh, a way of determining that the, the vowel reduction does in fact take, take, take place because the S in these two words, so like to want and to disagree, isn't palatalized. Whereas, uh, you know, the high front vowel E, it uh, causes palatalization of S in, in Atayal automatically, just like in many, uh, many other Austronesian languages. Um, whereas, if, uh, if we have a, a, longer, uh, a longer stem, for example, or we have a longer suffix, then it doesn't just uh, become a schwa, it gets completely deleted. So if, if uh, deletion of the vowel uh, won't lead to, to a, a consonant cluster, uh, like a homosyllabic consonant cluster, then, then it can just be deleted. Otherwise, it, it's neutralized to a schwa here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the third change is hiatus resolution. So we have um, uh, hiatuses that are only allowed between the final two vowels and hiatuses can be uh, the same, like two of the same vowel, um, two A's, two, two U's, or two, two I's, or else they can be a, a low vowel followed by a high vowel. So these are uh, the, the two types of hiatuses that we have. And for the first type, if it's uh, the two of the same vowel, then they just get uh, reduced or merged into a single vowel. So kumaal, uh, and again, you can clearly hear the two vowels here uh, in, in the, the speaker's pronunciation stresses final, there is no intervening glottal stop here. Uh, and it becomes kalan with just a single uh, vowel uh, when it's suffixed. Whereas if it's a low vowel followed by a high vowel, uh, it instead becomes, uh, the, the high vowel becomes a glide. So, so they, they form a, uh, so a C, V, G syllable. All right, now, so far, so good. But the, the, the complicated stuff starts here is what if we have not just one, but two of, of, of these vowel alternations happening inside the same root. And this is what happens. So if we have uh, schwa alternation uh, with a hiatus, right, uh, as in, in these roots, and what happens is um, the reduction, uh, the Rhythmic vowel reduction. Oh. I'm sorry. This should be rhythmic rhythmic vowel reduction with uh, with uh, schwa. The, the the title of the slide is wrong. So rhythmic vowel reduction still happens in these roots, even though the the deleted vowel is on the surface. Uh, so so here in in the suffix forms, it's no longer the the fourth to last, but sort of underlyingly, right? If, if we assume a, a rule-based approach here, then underlyingly, it would have been a fourth to last vowel, um, except for, of course, the, uh, the alternating, uh, you know, sh the historical schwa. So, so this still applies, uh, even, even though we can't really see the, the alternating vowel on the surface in suffix forms. Now, uh, Right, rhythmic vowel reduction with uh, hiatus resolution, same thing. Um, so 
hiatuses still cause so underlying hiatuses they still cause the rhythmic reduction to occur even though we don't really see the hiatus on the surface in suffixed form so here we have you know double uh, the, a, hi a hiatus in, in these forms in unsuffixed forms you can clearly see it uh, it is not audible so it doesn't occur on the surface in suffixed forms but we can still see its effects uh, on the underlyingly, I guess, fourth, fourth to, to last vowel by either weakening it to a schwa, or if we have, you know, this is a, um, a CA um, uh, prefix here. So uh, we have uh, just deletion of the vowel and, and re, re So this would be syllabified as uh, la, sorry, la pan. And this, this is a, a prime example of, uh, of counterbleeding opacity. So something that would be um, pretty difficult to model with classic OT. Now, um, we, we also have, um, uh, have a similar thing happening with a, like a historical schwa alternating in the, the, the penultimate position of a root. So if it doesn't surface in, in an unsuffix, really, like in a, in a prefix to infix to stem, uh, but it does surface once we suffix it, it still influences uh, the, uh, the reduction of uh, the fourth to last vowel here. So we have rumil uh, vak with no vowel here, but this vowel surfacing in glavakan, it still influences the weakening of, of this root vowel here. And this is, uh, again, if, if we're using rule-based approach, we would, we would think of it as a, as a feeding relationship. Um, now, there's, there's also other things happening in the data. So, for example, uh, Atayal does not like geminates. So, so geminates uh, on the surface are avoided. So, if, uh, if vowel reduction would lead to a geminate, uh, then, then vowel reduction does not take place, and instead the vowel is uh, is kept or it's uh, in a fort fortition. It's really hard to say with this data because I also have a pretty limited sample. It's difficult to find data for this specifically. So, uh, first of all, in the table below, right? If if we have in infixation plus suffixing or plus a longer root, then you know the vowel reduction takes place as normal. We have chin arkan here, so this there's no vowel after the infix in. Min Dexu, same thing. But if it is followed by an N, then, then we do have an intervening vowel here, Min Na Nakru, even though we would expect it to just be Min Nakru. But uh, this, this specifically happens in order to avoid a geminate N. So, in terms of a rule based analysis, um, right, we can, we can sort of uh, uh, suppose that we have some kind of like an underlying uh, of an, a featureless vowel, or maybe we just uh, say it's a, it's a schwa or an empty vowel slot. It's pretty much the same thing, just different ways of saying it. Uh, so uh, we start with syllabification. Uh, we do do feature assignments, so we assign uh, this a, a U feature if if it's not assigned in the last syllable. In the third to last syllable, we assign we assign an A. And if, if uh, a segment is not assigned any feature and it just gets uh, reduced, deleted, and we resyllabify it, so we get with the same root, uh, we get alternations of uh, vowels in both positions. Right. And uh, so this vowel reduction rule is, is sort of like a, a place that's uh, a, a combination of uh, you know, re reducing featureless vowels and, and also it's. Uh, reduces the fourth to last vowel. Right, so with uh, in, in interaction of rules in, in a rule-based analysis, what we could do uh, is uh, have, have this uh, positioning, right? The, the relative order of rules uh, help us. So we start with uh, reduce, reducing the vowel first, the fourth to last vowel in, or from the input, and then we uh, resolve a hiatus to arrive at you know, our final form 
uh, with a reduced vowel and a reduced hiatus. And this is a counter bleeding relationship. So in this case, in a rule-based analysis, vowel reduction must precede hiatus resolution. And uh, this works pretty well. So if we have a root like vayiq uh, with a hiatus in an unsuffixed form, and uh, we add uh, a, a monosyllabic and a, a disyllabic suffix to it, and we get different results because in, with a monosyllabic suffix, the, the end result is a, a VG syllable. So this, uh, the second vowel of the hiatus becomes a glide. But uh, with a longer suffix, the fourth to last vowel is, is deleted instead. So here again, vowel reduction preceding hiatus resolution uh, helps us achieve uh, the correct outcome in both situations. But uh, so this geminate reduction and also uh, the non, uh, the, the absence of reduction uh, in infixes and prefixes would be sort of a problem for, for rule-based analysis, right? Because we don't have, anal we don't have uh, uh, vowel reduction in, for example, uh, the infix um or the infix in. Um, and again, for uh, a, a surface geminate, the, 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 these, these are disallowed. So we have to find some way to avoid them. Of course, uh, we could have a, sort of a, a repair rule for geminates. Uh, so adding adding an extra vowel between a, a geminate in order to repair it, but that's a bit ad hoc. And for you know infixes and prefixes, it's um, it's even more difficult with a with a rule based approach. So uh, let's look at it on an OT based approach. So with, with OT, uh, we don't even have to posit any kind of featureless vowel segments. We just throw in uh, some consonants together and then try to repair them with uh, constraints. Uh, the problem is, of course. Uh, um, opacity. So, uh, uh, as, as we'll see in a minute, right? So the same, the same root, uh, uh, right? If, uh, if we just disallow complex syllable margins here, then we can uh, arrive at a like, more or less uh, desirable outcome with a minimal number of uh, epithetic vowels. Now here I, I'm not uh, actually talking about how the vowel is chosen, so, so that's uh, not really important at the moment. And uh, for vowel reduction, uh, we use a parsing constraint to try and uh, pass the words into, into binary feet, right? So um, this, this actually works pretty well. So by disallowing you know, complex syllable margins and also avoiding uh, any unparsed syllables, we can arrive uh, at, at a correct uh, form. Of course, we, need, uh, we, we also need a way to uh, know which vowel to delete. Um, and and that's, uh, that's a bit of a problem. Um, now, here specifically with, uh, uh, with these roots that, that uh, um, that, that have uh, an alternating vowel in a suffixed form. Right, so uh, here we use a this head foot faithfulness constraint, which is uh, like it's not great. Um, maybe if, uh, if other people have better suggestions, then I'm, I'm open to discussion. But uh, so we need uh, we need a way to to sort of um, preserve the faithfulness of of the uh, input initially, uh, and and not epenthesize it because well because uh, on the output we we do not pass that uh, uh, the initial syllable right so uh, something that uh, ranks higher than than pass and uh, for hiatuses. Um, it's also um, also a weird situation here because uh, hiatuses are only allowed in the final foot. So uh, another way of saying it is that only the final syllable can be onsetless. And, and unfortunately, the, the, this has to be modeled with uh, two separate constraints. So far, the only solution I've been able to come up with is uh, to, to separate the requ requirement of the onset on the final or stressed syllable into a separate constraint, and then they have different rankings. Um, so 
that's a, a possible way of doing it, I guess. Um, now, gemination though is uh, pretty easy to avo to avoid with you know just a star geminate constraint. So so that part OT takes care of uh, really well. The the biggest problem would be uh, opacity, right? So when we have some sort of uh, interaction uh, between between the different uh, alternation rules. And here we, we arrive at a, at a wrong conclusion based on uh, the, the rankings that we determined through you know, well, previous steps. So we would ideally want the, the candidate A uh, to win, right? Because it, it's, uh, it has a, a hiatus in the input and also this, uh, this vowel is a fourth loss. So we want it to, to be deleted. But uh, because we have a, you know, a, a passing constraint uh, prevents us from from deleting the vowel and instead chooses a, a different candidate. But this is, you know, opacity is, uh, of course, uh, a, a problem in, in classic OT. So that's, uh, I think there's a good way around that. So basically, um, this this data, this, this it's really complex. Um, there's many different kinds of alternations uh, and, and interactions between the different alternations. We have both conspiracy and opacity happening in the same data set. So and this means that it's uh, like not neither a purely rule-based nor a classic OT approach is, is useful here. So something like uh, harmonic ser serialism would perhaps uh, work better. Um, and I'm working on that. Unfortunately, I need to get uh, more acquainted with harmonic serialism before I can uh, present that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, we have uh, eight to nine minutes for questions. The chat should be open and you uh, please indicate if you have a question and I'll call you. Um, hi. Uh, hi. I had a question about um, uh, slide 15. Um, so I was wondering when you, so I thought about this because you mentioned you were interested in harmonic serialism. Um, and here you mentioned, so here you had uh, sort of uh, rules and each rule perhaps you can think of as a step in, a, uh, in the derivation. And um, you had a vowel reduction rule and, and uh, you say that it combines both the rhythmic vowel reduction and this deletion. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about why um, you're combining them. And one reason I thought it might be interesting for you to think about is because one of the critical things for harmonic serialism that's, uh, uh, you know, very, uh, that, that a lot of things uh, hinge on the assumptions is what counts as a single operation or a single step. So, so if you combine two things and consider that a single step and that has a large impact on um, what what you might have, uh, what you might be able to derive. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Um, I'm not really familiar with harmonic serialism, so, so perhaps if I were using it uh, to, to analyze this data, I wouldn't combine these two steps uh, into a single one and treat them separately. Um, here, um, so this, this was discovered by, uh, by Huang, uh, uh, Huang Huijuan, in, in her talk, um, and she presented the data. And basically the, the vowel reduction in, in Matuwal, it specifically follows an iambic pattern. So if, uh, 
we assume an underlying representation where you know we have a a some sort of a vowel segment or perhaps a vowel slot, and we syllabify all of uh, of the input. Then what we get in the end is falls uh, on the um, the weak syllable on iambic foot. So the the left uh, uh, syllable would be uh, reduced. The uh, the main exception here is that in the head foot, so the rightmost foot, only a an underlyingly uh, a weak a schwa vowel would be reduced. But uh, other than that, uh, it it strictly follows an iambic pattern of um, you know the fourth to last vowel, sixth to last vowel. Um, we we haven't had any data for eight to last vowel, but you know six, six to last vowel. Yes, it it, it also has this. Uh, uh, it follows this the same generalization. Okay, thanks, Andre. Thank you. Alex. Yeah, um, thank you very much for this. I, I think that I've uh, seen maybe a little bit of this data before, and I have. Can't, we can't hear you. Okay. How about now? Now it's, it's still pretty quiet. Okay. I'll I mean, if you can speak louder, then. I can great. definitely speak louder. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay, great. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I was just wondering about um, whether or not you were able to find, because you, some of the, a lot, well, basically all of the surface forms are analyzed as a vowel reduction. I'm curious if you found any evidence that there was like a vowel insertion uh, rule specifically because the language seems to be avoiding um, uh, complex onsets, and if some of these vowel reductions might be insertions rather than reductions, you follow me? Like, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great yeah. question. I mean, it, it it in a way it depends on on how you analyze the the underlying representation, right? So if you analyze it uh, with some some sort of a weak vowel underlyingly, then then yes, there would be you know deletions or reductions. Whereas in you know, in, in OT, you can just analyze it as a, you know, CCC or a, you know, CVCC root, and then a uh, takes place. Of course, historically, the, uh, so we have, uh, you know, this, this historic uh, schwa here in, in this data. And for this one, um, we, we know the source, right? So, so this to cook, that's, that's a, a, a Protostringent cognate, so so we do know that there was a schwa uh, here based on you know, comparison with other languages. And uh, for these, well, also we uh, when we can, uh, you know, uh, we compare them with uh, other dialects uh, of Atayal or uh, Sedak. Uh, they they do have a vowel in, in this position, and this. Uh, it's normally a, a weak vowel, so some sort of a default vowel or else a, a schwa. Um, now, I had also, yes, yeah, so, so this data also follows a similar pattern, except we have, uh, we have just uh, longer, you know, you could analyze them as uh, trisyllabic roots, I guess, although uh, they're only trisyllabic when they're suffixed, uh, not, not uh, when they're infixed or, or prefixed. From a diachronic point of view, it's basically all a reduction because uh, like, I, uh, I specifically worked on reconstructing proto atayal and based on comparisons with, uh, with other atayal diets, very few allow you know, CVC syllables in non-final position. Uh, mostly you have a you know, pretty uh, standard pattern of just CV, CV, and then CVC and uh, word finally. So here, Matuwal is innovating in the sense that it, it plays around with syllable structure and allows more closed syllables to occur in different places. Um, so diachronically, probably not, but synchronically, 
you know, if, if you think that, you know, the, the, the grammar sort of the, the way it's stored in the underlying representation is all like already without those vowels, then, then I guess so. Yeah. As, yeah. You know, that answers your question. Yeah. It, um, because I, I think that a lot of times the problem of opacity and optimality theory stems from um, over analysis of <clears throat> phonology that might not be present in the current grammar, but perhaps was present in the past. And so I think that with the opacity problem, I mean, I don't know, I, but it's just, it's possible that it might be historical residue that is best analyzed separately um, rather than attempting to analyze it along with the, the current grammar of the language if you follow. Yeah, for sure, for sure. No, and specifically for uh, some, some alternations like hiatus is, uh, so they, they come from a deletion of an intervening consonant here. Um, and, and they still follow the same pattern of, uh, you know, vowel reduction, reduction of a hiatus. So it's actually, uh, there's no way that uh, we could find it, you know, link it somehow diachronically. Moreover, uh, so this Matuwal data, this alternation, it, it happens in one village, uh, in a village called Jinshrei Tsun, where, you know, I, I get my data and uh, I think most linguists who work on Matuwal uh, get their data there. But I believe that this may not be the case in a village Ching An, so, so a different village that also speaks Matuwal. Um, so they may not have some of these alternations. It's, uh, it's pretty specific to, to this, uh, this one village. Uh, although, you know, this, uh, I haven't really done uh, any, any extensive fieldwork in Qing'an, so I, I don't know for sure. Uh, 